Monday, people talking sports. We're here. Anthony. I'm here. <laughs> We're both here. We're both here. It's been confirmed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, man, I had a weird weekend, man. Oh, yeah, what happened? Stressful. Really? Uh, last night, late at night, uh -huh. I, uh, I knock on the bathroom door, and my mm -hmm. girlfriend screams at the top of her lungs. And uh -huh. I'm like, I I'm pretty sure killers don't knock. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, you think there's some yeah. guy out there with, like, a machete who's like, uh, and she's like, I'm in here. And he's like, sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah, Jason never rang the doorbell. <laughs> never. <laughs> never. Murder is rarely polite. No. Yeah. Federer won Dude. Wimbledon. But may I say, unbelievable segue. I'm good at this. <laughs> <laughs> We're uh, yeah, still man. working out some kinks here. But, uh, yeah, Federer, 35. That's dude. crazy. How do you win at 35? I, I'm 34. I haven't won a day in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't tell you. You should not be good at tennis at 35 anymore. <laughs> no. No, that's like, it's like when you're a child star and you hit 15. It, it should be over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the, the good days are gone. <laughs> yeah, Mary-Kate and Ashley, those, your best days are done. Nah. Not happening. Nope. I mean, this segment, it's not happening. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> but Federer, good for him. I mean, he's doing a great job, and uh, we're very happy for him. It seems like he really needed to catch a break, that guy. Yeah, and, uh, good for Roger, really. Him you and know? Clooney, they really needed something I know. to work out for them. Finally. It's like Clooney, Federer, the casinos in Las Vegas. Just hopefully Finally. they win one day. <laughs> we got a great show coming up. We got John Franco in the house. Yeah, man, legend. Mets, legend. Mm hmm. Awesome guy. Yeah. He Italian dresses, guy. I saw his outfit, he dresses kind of like Charlie Sheen. I like it. <laughs> I love that look. He's got a good look. Yeah. We got a great show coming up. John Franco's coming up next. People talking sports. I'm joined by a former Met, a four time uh, saves leader. Four time All Star. Four time All Star, three time saves right, leader. Get it right, right? If you don't get, get it right. I'm off to a bad start <laughs> with uh, a you're, New York legend. You're all for one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm here with John Franco. Thanks so much for joining sure, us, man. Sure, great. Great to be here. Uh, yeah, man. Native New Yorker, we were just talking about mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. You play for the Mets. Yeah. That's got to be a dream come true. Yeah, I grew up a uh, big time Mets fan. Uh, my father was a Brooklyn Dodger fan, and then when the Dodgers went to California, that was it. Uh, I have an older brother, uh, five years older than I am, and uh, he was a Mets fan, so he just followed in their footsteps. So uh, I grew up watching, you know, the. 69 Mets when they went to World Series. That's my favorite team, some favorite players. And uh, ever since then, always dreamed about uh, playing for the Mets. That's amazing. But then you play originally for the Reds. Well, originally I got drafted by the Dodgers. And then, and then traded, traded to the Reds and then traded to the Mets. And then, you know, as, as a player, you're like a piece of meat. Today you're here in New York, and then they ship you across that's country. That's the most so. New York way to yeah, describe okay, being well, a player. That's, that's a, yeah. You're like a pastrami sandwich yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. Uh. A cold turkey sandwich, they ship you out of here. That's what they do. You know, I remember when I got traded and, uh, with the Dodgers, I was sitting in the bullpen with the, uh, the other gentleman that I got traded with, uh, Brett Wise. And our, our manager was uh, Del Crandall, an old military catcher for the uh, Milwaukee Braves. And uh, it was a hot day in Albuquerque, and I was in the bullpen. I had my hat off. I was taking the sun. And our pitching coach, Del, uh, Brent Strom, came up to us and said, Del wants to see you guys in the office. And I said, oh, damn, he saw us taking our sun, you know? <laughs> taking the sun, we're in trouble. You know, we've got to run laps or whatever. And uh, he said, well, I'm not going to beat around the bush. You guys been traded. Take care. Take care. Goodbye. That's it? That's what he said. <laughs> and I was like, First thing, and he said, Cincinnati. I said, oh, man, i got to shave my mustache. Because Cincinnati had no facial hair. You couldn't oh have no facial God. hair in Cincinnati. So I was, but it worked out because uh, Cincinnati had uh, no left-handed pitchers. Uh, they did, but they weren't. They were very old and on their way out. And uh, it worked out for me. Oh, my God. It's like such a weird. You find out you're traded. It's so, it feels yeah, so cold. You, you, I was in Albuquerque on Tuesday, and I was in Indianapolis on Wednesday. Oh, my God. Have you ever been to Indianapolis in the early 80s? It was brutal. <laughs> Not in the early 80s. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did New Year's Eve there once on a comedy show, yeah. and uh, pretty brutal the as following, well. Yeah, was, they sent me to Wichita. It was even worse. <laughs> so when a McDonald's closed at 7, I knew I was in trouble. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I love that. They're like Now I feel like every player is on like a regimented diet, but you guys didn't eat the same back well, then. Well, that's, that's why all the players are getting hurt. There's not enough fat on them right now. You know? <laughs> <laughs> back then, we used to eat McDonald's and you know, get $11 a day meal money, so you had to make it work. And then you get traded to the Mets. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's, again, it's like, it, it must be a mixed feeling because you're like, well, I'm going to go home to New York, but it's still, it must hurt to be traded. It was great because when I had gotten traded that, that, that winter, I was Become, going to, I was in the verge of becoming a free agent. I was one, one step away, and I'll never forget the, uh, 
met general manager called me up and said, uh, we would like to give you a three-year contract. Uh, what are you at? You know, what would you like? And I said, I don't know. I haven't spoke to my agent about it. But all, all that winter, I heard the rumors that I might be getting traded to the Yankees. So this was like on a Monday, they called me, what would you like? And I said, I don't know, let me talk to my agent. And then Wednesday, I got a phone call from the Reds again. I said, oh, maybe they won't give me an offer. They said, oh, we just made a trade. You've been <laughs> traded to New York. And I said, you just offered me a three-year contract, and I've been traded to New York. So I thought it was the Yankees the whole time. So I kind of hung up, and I didn't know who it was. And then like 15 minutes later, Joe McElvain, who was the general manager of the Mets, called me. And uh, he said, you know, you got traded to the Mets, which I was, you know, I was, a, I was so happy because this is the team I grew up rooting for, you know, the Tug McGraws, the Tom Seavers, the Bud Harrelsons, the Tommy Agees, and uh, I was just ecstatic uh, that I was coming home because every time I used to come in with the Reds to play the Mets, uh, back then uh, I would use, uh, we were allowed four tickets, four family tickets, two friends tickets. So I had to leave like 70, 80 tickets every time I came in from Cincinnati to New York because I had friends, cousins, and everybody. And who got mad because who You got sick? cousins you never heard of yeah, showing up? Yeah, of course. Up. I had got cousins that cousins and cousins. Yeah. But I had, uh, you know, my dad had friends from work, um, and my brother, everybody, and my, uh, my wife. So I had to leave like 80 tickets. But then when I got traded to New York, it was you know, 81 games here. Now everybody don't have to come to all 81 games. So we, uh, I set up a, my wife set up a phone where uh, we had family phone, you know, number of friends phone, and then another phone where we knew that we didn't have to answer that one. <laughs> people would have tickets. But it was great. I mean, I, you know, 1990 I got here, and I played from 1990 to 2004 with the Mets, which was great. And uh, the early 90s to the mid-90s were some tough days at uh, for sure. Shea Stadium. It I was, remember. Uh, I remember the big apple popping out, Todd yeah. Huntley going deep. Not I too many the, times in the early 90s, that's for sure. <laughs> we, that, that, our biggest thrill was sitting in the bullpen in April and May and watch the rats run by our feet. That was the biggest <laughs> thrill, you know? So, uh, uh, that's the most New York image ever. <laughs> uh, it's, of course, the bullpen was right near the garbage dump where they used to put all the, the garbage in the, in the right yeah. field bullpen. And uh, we used to sit there, you know, in, in April and May when the weather's a little cooler, you know, in the, Eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night, you see the rats run by. We got to the point where we started throwing balls at them, see if they hit it. You know, that's the way we used to loosen up sometimes. But, <laughs> but yeah. that's how you get your accuracy. Yeah, you get your accuracy. You know, it goes a rat, hit him. Do you think you still have your accuracy? Oh yeah, definitely. Do you think? I feel uh, bad in practice though. Do you think that maybe we could uh, try to knock an apple off my head writer Anthony's head? No problem. <laughs> Do I have to sign a waiver in case I hit uh, him in the face? Nah, nah, we're good. All right. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we're going to put an apple on Anthony's head, and uh, we're going to see if, if you can grab it, and then I'm going to give it a shot, too. All right. <laughs> so, John, maybe just pretend that he's a rat in your bullpen right now. <laughs> All right. No problem. You don't like any of those apples. <laughs> Ooh. 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 Nice. <laughs> oh, this one's going to hurt. <laughs> yeah, oh, man, the, the other one's fine, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, your turn. Why don't you try? Ah! I'm bleeding. <laughs> Real blood. You knocked it off. <laughs> Welcome back to People Talking Sports. We had a great show for you. 424 career saves. Let's see if you could save the show. John Franco. <laughs> it's a little too late for that. <laughs> uh, you definitely saw something that looked like him on Game of Thrones last night. Anthony DeVito. And the only thing you have to Shafir is Shafir itself. Ari Shafir. Right, Watch his nice. new Netflix special tonight. Uh, midnight Pacific time. It's out right now. It's out right now. Yeah. <laughs> Christoph Porzingis is looking amazing right now. Uh, and I feel a little weird being this excited about it. I'm like, yes, this 21-year-old boy is looking shredded. You know? <laughs> it's a little creepy. But I'm excited. He looks, I mean, this is, this gives Knicks fans hope and we need it. I think it's great. I mean, he's still developing. Uh, yeah. he finally probably got on a good weight program. Living in New York for a couple years now, he found some good places to eat now. And, yeah. and uh, he stopped gaining some weight and get a good trainer. Uh, I think he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. I don't I think so. he looks shredded at all. <laughs> I think he looks like my nephew. He's like, make a muscle, Timmy. <laughs> and then he pushes from behind. He goes, how about that? <laughs> it looks like a big fungo bat. <laughs> it is, it is, I, yeah, he, I mean, he's so thin. So yeah. it's thin, But he is, he's, he's getting a little toned. I mean, he definitely looks different from last year. He's got long M&M body. 
<laughs> it's yeah, just like yeah, shredded yeah. but small. <laughs> I just love too how it's a it's a really tough picture, but then he still uses an emoji in the caption. <laughs> He's just like thinking to himself, like, how do I show I mean business? A pineapple or a red shoe? <laughs> That's it's being young. Yeah, right? yeah. The, the emojis, because like I was like dating a younger girl once, and like I don't even know what they. It was like I was just like monkey. What is monkey? Mean? Is that good or bad? Like, yeah. I guess we're broken up. <laughs> when you have kids, you realize what those emojis mean. <laughs> what do they mean? What, what do I, I, have, no, I have no idea. My kids always send me emojis with uh, little with thumbs up, thumbs down, little doggies and cops and things. Cops. Yeah. Little, <laughs> <laughs> that's the best way to say you get arrested. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Thumb down. Thumb down. <laughs> oh, no. This one's awesome. Another New Yorker, Aaron Judge, defies physics. He hit the roof in the Marlins Stadium on a home run. It didn't count as a home run. He defied what physics <laughs> was, I guess, built, it was built to avoid something like this. They brought in physicists. Yeah. To say, like, it can't be done. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. did it. And then they started talking about his bat velocity and his speed velocity off the bat. Well, that crap. It's so funny. It's like that like expression, like everybody has a plan until you get punched in the face. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? They worked all this stuff out. Then he hits the roof. They're like, ah, oh, yeah, I don't know. Uh. <laughs> they should have gave him two home runs for that. So. Yeah. I mean, I remember Daryl Strawberry hit the roof up in Montreal when we were playing the Expos. And uh, there was an argument whether it should be a home run or a double. And then, uh, I don't even know what the hell they gave him. They might have gave him a double out of it because that, that roof was up there too. You should get rewarded. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's yeah. Like, I feel like next Aaron Judge is gonna like hit a ball so hard it like breaks through an airplane and stops a hijacking or something. <laughs> and like even ISIS is gonna be like, we didn't prepare for Aaron Judge. But <laughs> no. Put a flight attendant on that ball, right? <laughs> Bryce Harper does not like coming to crazy and hectic New York. I hate when people say this when they're just like, New York's crazy. It's like yeah, it's crazy. That's, we're not, we're not, I always go on the road and people are like, I could never live there. And I'm like, yeah, we're not recruiting more people. There's, yeah. there's 8 million people here. I'm not, on the, I'm not on the subway at rush hour. Like, we could use a few more people here, you know? Good, stay in Mississippi or wherever you live. We got plenty, you know? Yeah, it's not necessary for you to be here. We're good. Yeah. It takes a certain player to play here. There's a lot of players that don't want to deal with the, obviously the fans, but obviously the, the, uh, the media. He's happy in Washington. Uh, he's a great player. I think he would love it here in New York. I think he would thrive here in New York, and New York would love him. You know, I've lived here and I played here, and I could tell you, going to other cities, San Francisco, Philadelphia, uh, they have some hard fans. Like, they curse you out from your dead grandmother to your unborn children. So it was, uh, it's nasty. <laughs> nasty. <laughs> that is a weird heckle. Yeah, that is. Your wow. grandma's yeah, dad. Yeah. Like, yeah, so? Yeah, What's it's on? terrible. The children you'll later have will be gone. <laughs> yeah. Just tell me about my game. Yeah, yeah. Why are you bringing so many family members? I, was, I was in Chicago warming up one time, and every time I threw a pitch, I would get hit in the head with peanuts. Really? And, <laughs> in, at, in, in Wrigley Field. And, and I told our bullpen coach, I said, I'm going to see who this is. I'm going to go in the stand. And they were a couple of rows away from me. And he said, no, you're not going to do it. I said, yes, I am. And I threw a pitch, and boom. And then I faked the pitch, and I saw these four guys. Boom, boom, boom. And I started making a lunge for the, and my teammates. Everybody grabbed us. <laughs> Security came. It was, four, it was four teachers who took the day off. They were drinking and drunk, and they had oh thrown. My God. They wow. came and arrested them. Wow. Put them in the, the holding cell at Wrigley Field. <laughs> And uh, the cops were saying, do you want him to press charges? He says, no, no. He goes, all right, we'll just keep him here for seven or eight hours. No problem. <laughs> That's, these are four teachers now. Can you picture, what did you do today? Yeah. Oh, I threw peanuts out of a baseball player. <laughs> got, got rushed by, by yeah. a baseball player. John Franco put us here. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. a different time when you can legitimately be like, I think I'm going to go to the stands and beat yeah. somebody up. People are like, I wouldn't, but yeah. that's up to you. you want it, I want, I'll tell you I was going to go, and the, the bullpen coach just grabbed us, and my teammates, everybody, we'd point to the guys. They came and got them guys out fast. Man. Put them that's in the, the New York in you. That's yeah. like the... It is, but, you know, it's, it's still, you know, what happens get hit in the eye with that peanut while I'm warming up? That's, that's trying to, you know, I have to worry about fasting Sammy Sosa, and I got to worry about the plant this peanut getting hit in the eye. Yeah. <laughs> is that the most Italian thing you did, playing baseball? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the stands. I'm just showing you guys what's what, all right? You respect me. Oh, yeah. Vito, go take care yeah. of this guy. <laughs>What's your weirdest subway story? Some lady was staring at me and she came up to me and told me that she likes my acne. Uh, one time I got thrown up on 
Ooh, that's kind of hot. Somebody got on with a saxophone and claimed that the aliens took over his saxophone and he couldn't stop playing unless somebody gave him money. I uh, once went in there and they didn't make my sandwich right. The guy took a desk, brought it onto the subway. Did you ever see anyone uh, fighting? Then decided to make that area his own living situation. We were making love topless on the subway. He took out a subway sandwich, put it on the desk, started eating the subway sandwich on the subway. Throwing a shoe, spray painting, anything wild. It was like work, home, bedroom. There's nothing worse than getting approached by weird people in New York City. <laughs> that was Joe Liz. And uh, man, he looks uh, terrible on camera. Uh, he is not just a uh, talk about man. weird people. <laughs> he, that man does not have a chin. Okay. <laughs> uh, subway stories. You, any, you get you get approached yeah, on the subways, subway. and I, uh, you know, like I said. You know, people look at you and they go like that, and I was like, yeah, shh. And they, they see them taking photos, and obviously you see the people coming around with the, you know, the guitars and the singing and selling stuff, and it's, it's kind of uh, entertaining. Yeah, it makes I love the ride it. go quicker. I had a guy get on the other night at like 3 a.m. and he just kept, he kept yelling out, he's like, y'all scared now. <laughs> he just kept saying, like the third time he was like, yeah, we're scared of you, obviously. <laughs> Why would we not be? Yeah. No security, we're scared. I had this, uh, I had this like, performer who would do magic tricks and he would do two tricks, but then for his third one, he'd reach into the, his like baby carriage thing and he would just pull out a bird. But he wouldn't do the first part where you're like, oh, there's nothing here, then a bird. He just showed everybody he had a bird. And New York is like crazy enough. I'm like, I don't even know if he's a magician. He must be a bird salesman, and I don't know what that is. I can't get enough of the Lonzo Ball story. I'm sick of it already. <laughs> well, look, I think he's a great, I think he's going to be a special player, but his dad has got a quiet. I love this, though. He had his best game yet, and he's wearing the Kobe shoes, not the big baller brand for yeah. $500, which, like, and by the way, if you're shooting one for 11 for three in your big brawler brand shoes, how am I going to do in these shoes? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not going to shoot well. Yeah. You're not going to shoot at all. No. Oh, not at all. <laughs> it's kind of cool that I noticed that Lonzo Ball's wearing a different sneaker every time he plays. It's kind of, I think, cool to the brands that he's like not owned by any of the brands. Not right now. Not, not, yet. Right, not, not yet. yet. Right. Yeah. Somebody throw that bunch of dead presidents in front of him. As soon as that money comes in, <laughs> yeah, he's going to get on. That's yeah. what, yeah, like, LeVar was like, that's the beauty of being independent. It's like, no, it's the beauty of not being a real company. Yeah. You can just do <laughs> yeah. whatever you want. Yeah. I like his dad is going to sign a shoe contract for somebody. You know somebody. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe even, like, Topsiders or something. <laughs> I don't know what that is. But it's like old, old man like, yachting shoes. <laughs> I got a pair of those. Very nice. <laughs> You're a tiny right you all star. You know? <laughs> which, which NBA player is going to wear rock ports or something? Yeah. You know? <laughs> Markel Fultz got, he heard, turned his ankle, but I heard he was wearing the Greg Odins. <laughs> so, <laughs> got him. But, uh, <laughs> so he played one game then. That's one it. One game. That's it. That's all he got. I heard Dan Patrick say that it should be. If he can last five rounds or four rounds, it should turn into an ultimate fighting match. Oh, yeah, after that, that would be good. That's huh? interesting. If he gets past. After five rounds, I should switch and go through yeah, the switch. Yeah, do half and half. Because mm -hmm. that would force Mayweather to yeah. play cards. Or maybe every, 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 six and 12. Every three rounds, they should yeah. switch. Uh -huh. Different game, round 12, beer pong. Yeah. Just <laughs> keep changing it up. Why yeah, not? Yeah, yeah. Final round trivia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great. Thumb more with the boxing gloves on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If they rock them, sock them robots. Yeah, like Billy Madison. That'd be unbelievable. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah, that'd be cool. All right, John, thanks so much for joining us today. Obviously, it's been a pleasure being around you guys. It's been really, really great. <laughs> <laughs> I, took you around for I love it. I like the Lego one. Like one. <laughs> we got uh, the list coming up next. Stick around. <laughs>on people talking sports with Liz Gonzalez and the list. Yeah, it's my birthday. I know. Happy birthday. Ooh, Happy birthday. birthday. Thank you. Aww. 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 I'm allergic to chocolate, but thank you for the gesture. <laughs> <laughs> we did our best. Well, you know. <laughs> thank you, guys. You inspired me here. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So what is the list? This so week? naturally, we're talking about the best gift givers. Ah. Uh, of course. There is one guy that we are going to leave off the list, um, but tweet at us and let us know who that person is, if you know who he is, when we're all said and done here. <laughs> we're kicking off the list with Tom Brady, who is well known for giving everybody on the team Uggs, but back in 2007, he really stepped up his game. They went 16-0, and he bought all of his linemen Audi SUVs. 
Maybe if you would have given them Range Rovers, they would have gone 19 and 0. Yeah, go Giants. <laughs> Zing. Yeah. Yeah, he bought his Lyman oh, yeah. cars, but he isn't yet to buy Belichick sleeves. <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal was in Cleveland for only one year, and basically the only thing he did when he was there was spend money on LeBron James. For his 25th birthday, he gave James a Rolls Royce Phantom, which is valued at $400 thousand dollars Jesus wow. if you're Kobe Bryant are your feelings hurt just a little bit you're with him for eight years you get nothing he's there for a year he gets a car yeah, he get and he gave his ex-wife the gift of basketball wives and <laughs> me the gift of knowing that not everything basketball related is good <laughs> most isn't actually yeah that was rough that show wait Shaq wrote a wrote a rap lyric about Kobe did he? Yeah. He, oh. Remember that? We rap? definitely Shaq can't share that one. <laughs> <laughs> Our producer has curled up into a little ball. <laughs> well, last on the list, I'm giving it to Big Poppy because he brought the city of Boston Big Poppy. Not only did he break the curse, but unlike LeBron, he won not one, not two, but three championships. And then, of course, during the marathon bombings, he was the guy that brought him back to life, too. Well, that, that's a great point. And to go to our final gift giver, we're going to give a gift giver. Uh, right here. Let's play the footage. Liz, <gasps> Brett Favre here. I understand it's your birthday. Want to wish you a happy birthday. Have a great day. <laughs> oh, wow. It's wow. weird that I got to deliver that because I had nothing to do with that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so very cool. And the that is like So, you know. <laughs> and I'm wearing green. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I mean... That's a big one for me. I, can I cry? Am I about to cry? No. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Wow. Big Brett Favre. Favre. Yeah. That's my child. He's the reason that I love football. That's my hero. Wow. He sent the text, but it wasn't appropriate, so we weren't there. <laughs> we don't know that was him. I stand by that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching People Talking Sports. Uh, happy birthday, Liz Gonzalez. Thank you for the list. Thank you, Ari Shafir. Watch his Netflix special uh, streaming now. Anthony DeVito, as always. People Talking Sports. Thank you very much.